Hello everyone, this is John Marshall of St. Mary Magdalene, Ellie Solitary with a private vow of celibacy. Many of us here are the benefactors of our beloved Goethe Saiba, St. Francis Saviour. Not just the lay people, there are many peer persons among the priests as well as nuns who got a lot of favours from St. Francis Saviour. Not just them, today we are going to see the life of a saint. She is Blessed Mary Jospin of Jesus Crucified. She is a saint in the process of canonization. She is a Carmelite saint and she was greatly helped by St. Francis Saviour through his great miracle. So Blessed Mary Jospin of Jesus Jesus crucified was born in Naples, Italy on February the 18th, 1894 in the famous and the noble Grimaldi family of Italy. So on 10th March of 1918, she joined the Carmelite order. Then she remained as a Carmelite. She was known for her humility, simplicity, as well as her patient endurance of several trials and her deep spirituality with which she touched a lot of people. And she and she was prior as elected as prior as in 1945 and she died on March the 14th, 1948. Until that, she was continuing as the prioress and she had a holy death a lot of people came down there and she was a saint people have realized that so now how this saint is connected with our saint francis savior and you know many people in goa must have been aware about the chikali Carmelite sisters these sisters hardly come out of their monastery and spend their lives completely inside the monastery praying for the needs of the world. And this was the vocation of our sign, Blessed Mary Josephine of Jesus Crucified as well. So what was her devotion to Saint Francis Saviour? So if you know her life, this saint was afflicted with several diseases even when she was young age itself. So in the year 1912, she contracted some angina. Angina, it's a very worse disease and as well as TB, tuberculosis in the spine. Tuberculosis in the spine and then she had problems with the dorsal spine and she had lesions in the vertebrae and meningitis of the marrow of spine. You can imagine what a gravity of these kind of illnesses and finally she succumbed to paralysis in the year 1912. So she was remaining like that for like almost like 10 years and uh, she was having a very hard time. On 26th of June 1920, 1922, 26th of June 1922, the arm of St. Francis Saviour, which was kept in Rome. So you, you must be, I must be adding a point here. You know that the incorrupt remains of our beloved Saiba lie in Old Goa, but his right arm was operated long back itself and it was taken to Rome, to the Church of Jesu in Rome, under this orders of the Superior General of the Jesuits, long back to bless the people over there. And you know, there is a procession of saints and also there is a, uh, there is a holy pilgrimage with the relics in which the relics of the saints will travel from one city to the other place or country to country. You must be aware of that. The same way, the right arm of Saint Francis Saviour was brought to her convent during a pilgrimage journey and on that time the nuns have decided let us give it a try let us have faith in jesus and his servant saint francis savior yes faith can move mountains jesus said in the gospel it's very true when the right arm of saint francis savior just touched her she got up she got up from her paralytic condition she got up immediately from the bed so we can come back here in the gospel also it comes jesus cured a woman who was infirm for some 18 years and she was paralyzed and her saint has been paralyzed for a long time but when the arm of saint francis Xavier touched her she immediately got up and she started serving the lord and Saint Francis Xavier appeared to her in a dream at night and blessed her. So dear friends, such was the great devotion that this saint had towards Saint Francis Xavier as well as Saint Francis Xavier had blessed her with a great miracle. 
and dear friends here is a relic of the saint and this is an italian italian language so you can see here closely so this relic is from a small portion of the habit of um, so of uh, this blessed mary josephine of jesus crucified so there's a small portion of a cloth is kept here so you can see here quite close up so how i got this uh relic so when in 2018 19 during that time when i was going through some of the books in the margao carmelite monastery accidentally i came across a book in which i was traveling through the pages and i found this relic falling out from that and then i asked the superior of the monastery uh reverend dr archibald gonzalves father archibald gonzalves father can i keep this a relic with me and father readily said yes you can keep it and this is how this relic ended up with in my hands and since she was so devoted to the saint what i can do in my most possible way is that whenever i go for a mass to the basilica i will take this relic there as well as near the tomb of saint francis savior to receive the blessings so dear friends and the church also says that when uh, we pray any approved prayer to a saint on the feast day of the saint we will be receiving a partial indulgence so june 26 19 1922 is the date in which she received a miracle and if you see in the carmelite order on 26th june uh, is the day which is assigned for her for the celebration of her sanctity so every order has its own like you know color calendar of saints if you're the benedict singer have their own calendar of saints other have the old calendar of saints she is commemorate commemorated through the worldwide carmelite order on 26th of june see what a coincidence so uh, we are now going to pray a prayer and a fruit prayer to her which can receive you, receive you a partial indulgence uh, on her that is on 26 june if you pray so with this relic let us now uh, immerse our minds towards our lord our dearly beloved saint francis savior goes saiba who had done this great miracle to another saint blessed mary jews been and as well as the heroic life of Blessed Mary Josephine of Jesus Crucified, who lived a life of suffering like that of Jesus Crucified. Let us bring all the people who are terminally ill, people who are affected with cancer, with TB, and who are abandoned by the doctors. We can't do anything. And people who are paralyzed, people who are in coma, all these impossible and difficult cases, let us bring us before the saint and Saint Francis Saviour. And imploring the help of our Lord Jesus Christ now we will say this prayer Almighty and eternal God who willed to conform to Christ crucified the Virgin Blessed Mary Josephine as a victim for sinners grant that we through her intercession and example please say your intercession your intention Through her intercession and example may always embrace our own cross and humbly fulfill your will through our lord jesus christ your son in the unity of the holy spirit one god forever and ever amen so dear people may god bless you all happy memorial of uh, blessed mary josephine of jesus crucified we will also pray for her eventual canonization as the saint for that intention we will now say one hail mary and one our father our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil amen hail mary full of grace the lord is with thee blessed are ye amongst women and blessed is the fruit of your womb jesus Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. So, dear friends, this is Our Lady of Mount Carmel. May Our Lady of Mount Carmel and her daughter, Blessed Mary Josephine of Jesus Crucified, along with Saint Francis Xavier, our beloved Goisa Saiba, may all bless you all and may the blessings of our Almighty Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. God bless you all.